this is oil out of the Deepwater Horizon blowout 60 miles offshore. Here we are in Barataria Bay. This is called Cat Island, which is one of the critical nesting habitats for a number of seabird species. Brown pelicans and white pelicans and laughing gulls and terns as well. Look at these roseate spoonbills here. They're just gorgeous, huh? This island is one of the many, many critical nesting habitats on the southern coast of Louisiana that's being hammered by this oil. These birds are, there's dozens of adult pelicans here that are severely oiled. Um, many have already died. Uh, there's some in here that will die later today or tomorrow, certainly. Um, they're preening themselves, ingesting the oil. They have it in their eyes. Uh, they, can, they cannot fly anymore with their feathers so heavily oiled, so they can't go out and feed. So either they starve to death or they have toxic contamination from ingesting the oil, or both, likely. There's an oiled pelican flying out, trying to fly out here. He's having a hard time, but he, he just sat down on the water here. You see him? Right up here. He can fly. He's not going to be able to. He, this is a dead bird. He's not going to be able to fish anymore. Unless he's captured and cleaned, and even then it's a long shot. But he's definitely in distress. This is a lot of thick oil right down there in those feathers. Looks like you. Come on over, we'll take you home. Oh my God, man. God help us all. Sorry, man. This is really bad, guys. Any way you look at this, this is bad for these birds. Uh, many will die. The amount that you actually recover, the number of carcasses you actually recover is usually only maybe 10 or 15 percent of the total number killed because most of them just sink offshore and you never recover them anyway. So uh, there certainly have been thousands of birds killed by this spill so far. There will be thousands more. There will be eggs that are not laid in future years and um, uh, low survival possibly in some of these colonies for years to come. The amount of oil on this tip of the island is extraordinary. The booming has been ineffective. They're not tending these booms at all. There's more oil we have seen inside the booms than outside. The sorbent boom, these long white, at least formerly white, sausage-like things are meant to absorb the oil from the water. They do that very well, but then you need to take them out of the water, and they haven't done that. See, this should certainly be scooped up. <laughs> this one, because if it's not, it's going to be right there on the island, you know, by the end of the day. Many of the sorbent booms have just washed up into the nesting area. So there's a lot of oil right at the foot of these pelican nests. There's no way these adults won't get oiled and that these chicks won't get oiled. Both are feeding on oiled prey, so they're not, they're probably not going to have a very long life and certainly not a very pleasant one. There's some chicks in the, in the bushes over here. With oil right beneath them in the mangrove roots. They'll have to come right through that to even take their first flight. So before they take their first flight, they will be oiled from our negligence offshore. It's just a tragedy. So, you know, if the only thing we get out of the Deepwater Horizon is better safety regulations for offshore drilling and better government oversight, I think we've really missed a real opportunity here to get to sustainable clean energy in this country where we know we've need, needed to go for decades 
But we just have, to, we've, we've been too lazy, essentially. We've had easy energy, and uh, we haven't done the work that's necessary to get us there.